Today we are talking about the reasons that people track foods. How I want to do this video is to look at some of the typical meals that I would have eaten in my history. So there's three ideas I'm going to use. I'm going to track based on the calorie counting. I'm going to look at the idea of macro percentages, and then I'm going to look at carb count. And I hope that by going through this, I'm going to be able to help you to see the way that different ways of tracking food can impact the health that you're having. I chose four different types of meals that I know for sure I would have eaten back then and then today. So first one you have is the typical fast food restaurant meal, Big Mac, fries, apple pie, and a soda. That's, that's what the information you're going to see from this is going to be. The second meal was a typical meal that I think would be had. It's a sirloin steak, fettuccine, uh, Alfredo, um, a salad and wine. That's if I was going to like a, you know, Olive Garden or a nicer restaurant. I'm going to put that one in for that. And then I have two meals that are more of what would look like today or not today, today, but in my history. So I have a Caesar salad and it has um, slow, slow cooked chicken in it about 200 grams, I would say. And then I probably, so that Caesar salad would have had no croutons and it would have had either, I think the way I have it here is with Parmesan cheese. Um, it would have had the bacon and it would have had a normal fat dressing. Oh, by the way, the Olive Garden salad would have also had a normal fat dressing. And for the keto meal, I probably would have also had like some nuts at the end of that meal uh, when I was doing this at the beginning of my journey. And then the next meal that I'm going to point out is a more recent, uh, you know, in the last year, I would have been eating a carnivore style meal. The one I chose to put in for today, but I could have chosen anything. But I just decided to go with um, something I had recently, which was 300 gra grams of uh, ground pork, two eggs. And in the ground pork, I had put a little bit of pesto sauce just to, for flavoring. So that's why I say it's carnivore style, because I know pesto sauce is not carnivore. <laughs> um, I do sometimes have purely carnivore meals. Like I could have also put there two pork chops with two eggs or different things, but I do sometimes put cheese. So, and, and I do sometimes put spices. I do always put spices. So I, I put it carnivore style because I know some hardcore carnivore people don't even put spices, just put salt and that's it. If we're looking at this from the calorie point of view, the first thing I want to point out is that the healthy meals, in my opinion, the healthy meals, so the keto meal and the carnivore meal, actually have more calories in them. And that's important for us just to look at from the point of view that when we're trying to lose weight and we're doing any kind of calorie counting story, we're very often told that our calories, so I'm a woman, and I would usually be pointed towards being under 1,500 for sure, but oftentimes even somewhere around 1,200, 1,300 calories for my day. I want to point out that this is how I was eating. So from, let's say, 15 to 40 whatever. And it would have been normal for me if I was having some kind of fast food restaurant for supper or some kind of nicer restaurant for supper that that would have been my meal. So having, having, you know, 1500 calories for supper ish in both of those scenarios would have been normal to me, but in a diet scenario, that's my whole day. So it's important for us to keep that in mind going forward. I want to make sure that we pay attention to the fact that also with the healthy meals, whereas I would have had um, a Coke or wine with, if I was in a nice restaurant, I probably would have had a glass of wine instead of having a soda. Um, with the healthy meals, I was usually drinking diet soda or I was having uh, flavored water, but both of those tend to have artificial sweeteners in them, which are not really healthy. And I recognize that. So in essence, these meals, 1500 and more crushing anything else that I should have been eating for the day if I was trying to lose weight on a calorie kind of scenario. So then what would happen if we were to decide to look at this from a macro point of view, right? And now a lot of the time it's about distribution, right? So 
on the macro side, a lot of times we're talking about either look, starting to look at keto ideas or just trying to look at the percentage of fat that's in your meal and trying to keep your fat percentages low, trying to, trying to do better for yourself. Oh, by the way, I just want to point out that in that carnivore meal, you can see little bits of um, veg in the, in the meat. That's not really there. This was the only picture I could find. I forgot to take a picture of my actual meal. Uh, the salad is of my actual meal. And these two other images are also just images I took off the internet. So just for clarity. Um, but I want to point out that the fat percentage is like 38%, 42% for, in my opinion, you know, much lower, but normal levels. So how low, how low do I need to bring my fat down for these meals to, to be low fat? It's a whole other conversation, right? But I just want to make sure that we also keep in mind that when I was eating, when I was allowing myself to eat McDonald's for supper or Olive Garden style things for supper, I was 70 pounds overweight and not even realizing that, that the way that I was eating was having such a huge impact on the weight that I was living. So we fast forward a little bit. And if we're looking at this now from a different, healthier option, because I started to become aware that I should be eating healthier. And, you know, chicken is a way that we can take some fat off of our plate because red meats tend to be higher in fat, even pork, which is a white meat, but it's still, it's higher in fat. So I went with the chicken option to see what would happen to the numbers. And honestly, I think a lot of the time I would have gone for the chicken option just because I, I'm a pref I prefer chicken. And still, I'm 34% which is, you know, in line with McDonald's. So it's not really helping my fat. It did help my protein a lot. But then we have this other um, interesting thing that happens, which is that when you go for the healthier chicken option, which tends to be a leaner cut of meat, then you end up having a protein of 29%, which even if you look at my carnivore and keto days, it's really high. So once again, we're in that situation where we're starting to see that it depends on what you take off the plate that determines if you're going to have another thing that's high or low. And so, and that's important for us to think about because we, we keep hearing that keto is a high protein diet and it, it, it isn't necessarily a high protein diet in the sense that in these scenarios, um, I'm eating at the top end of the amount of protein that I'm supposed to have for myself in like the, 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 the carnivore keto meals, but it's not like excessively well beyond what, what I was supposed to have. So if we look at the actual carb numbers, we really start to see what the benefits are of the keto way of eating the carnivore way of eating versus the standard ways where either I'm being totally caution to the wind with my with my food at McDonald's or relative moderate in the way I'm eating at Olive Garden or really good with myself at Olive Garden. And by the way, at the Olive Garden meal that was chicken, the side was vegetables. So I really tried to choose things that I was doing when I was trying to be good and show you how even though my calorie count did come down, it came down significantly. One of the things we need to take in keep in mind is that with those first three meals, I would have been eating very likely breakfast on the, on the weekend, breakfast and, and lunch before I had that meal. And if I was a work day, I probably would have just had lunch before I had that meal. So this is not even all of the food that I would have been um, eating that day compared to when I initially began keto this kind of protein source would have been split between two meals and I would have had, but I, and I would have kept my carb count to six to, to less than 20 here it ended up being 16. But, and what's interesting to me with that is that automatically that means that my calorie intake would have gone up. And yet still in that scenario, I lost 70 pounds right now. What's even more interesting to me when you look at this scenario is that today, those are my meals for the day. 
So I'm not eating anything else because I'm good after I've eaten that for 24 hours. And the question I often get is, how is that possible? And one of the things that focusing on carb count does for us, that focusing on calorie count cannot do for us, is, and it can't do it for us for a very specific reason. When you focus on calorie count, you're so much more likely to take fat away because fat provides more calories than protein and carbohydrates that you end up less satisfied with what you've eaten. So if I allow myself to have carbier things on my plate, if I allow myself to have low-fat meats, then what ends up happening is this interesting place where my body is not satisfied because I didn't get the energy that it needed. So a fat is an energy source. But if I put a lot of veg on my plate to help me to feel satiated, which is what was happening with the French fries, what was happening with the pasta, in, and even the vegetables in the chicken olive garden meal, because those vegetables were not low glycemic vegetables, right? They were often um, potatoes and and carrots. and Now, sometimes they were low glycemic, like sometimes it was zucchini, sometimes, so it depends. But at the end of the day, what what ends up happening if there's peppers and all these things on your plate that are increasing the amount of carbohydrate that you're eating, not only are you getting the energy from those carbohydrates, which of course will help you to fuel and do things with your body, but you're also getting the emotional, physiological, psychological reaction that we have to carbohydrates, one of pleasure and excitement and it pushes us to want more of it. So part of the reason that the first three meals didn't allow me to feel satisfied for 24 hours is because those first three meals have so much carbohydrate in them that my body gets into the cycle where I eat the carb and some of it is used for energy, of course, along the course of whatever it is I'm going to do in the next few out, like few days, so 48 hours. But a great deal of it gets put away as fat on my body to protect me from being too high in sugar in my bloodstream, which is dangerous. And we all have heard of diabetes and maybe not all of us have heard of metabolic syndrome, but that's a syndrome where you have internal damage, you have weight gain, you have, there's all kinds of markers that are related back to over having too much uh, sugar in the bloodstream. So your body really works hard to make sure that that doesn't happen. And most of us can go many, many years without having that negative be there. So for myself, the negative really, truly started to show itself in, in a very dis significant and, 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 and impactful way when I was in my 20s, early 20s, when my knees started hurting me. Now, I had signs of that before. I just didn't know what the signs were because the acne is also, um, and your skin condition is also uh, impacted by what you eat. I just didn't know how much it was impacted. And I didn't know that that was something that was talking about what I'm eating. Um, so when we look at the carb count, obviously the McDonald's meal like had the worst. It's like 192. Now, if you think about the fact that the the next meal in Olive Garden was 111, and the next meal was 68. Those are pretty, like the 68, that's a pretty good number for, um, if and even the 111 can be a pretty good number if you're doing low carb. The, it's a matter of, can I keep myself to that 125 or less? Whereas the junk food already threw me out. I like, there, I can't eat anything. Actually, I've already overeaten if I ate that McDonald's meal. Now, maybe I could have not eaten the pie and then I would have fallen into range. But the thing now is, what am I having at lunch? Now, typically, when I was eating normal diets, I probably would have had one of two things. Either some other meal, so like supper from the night before, like a real a meal meal, but just a smaller version of it, 
for lunch, which you could say take the Olive Garden meal and cut that in half. So let's say it would have been 750 calories and let's say it would have been adding another 50 grams of carb. Now, right away, I've already gone over and we're not even talking about, no, well, let's say if I did the chicken version, I can still be moderate here. If I add 30 to that, I'm at 90. Okay, great. And then what would I've had for breakfast? So I know myself, I know what I was having. I was having a bowl of cereal um, or I was having oatmeal. And in both of those scenarios, <clears throat> when we did the math, um, it was two to three servings. So again, right away, I'm blowing myself out of the water. There's no way that I'm staying in that 125 range, which would then put me qualifying for low carb. And as you can see for keto, the one meal doesn't even let me be anywhere near keto if I'm looking at those three first normal meals. Why are we talking about this? Because so many of us are trying to lose weight. And we're trying to do what we're told to do by doctors, nutritionists, um, trainers, and most of them are either telling us to track calories or they're telling us to pay attention to your macros. And I want us to understand that in both of those scenarios, like even here, at I was at 5%. And I got 16 grams of carbs. So the percentage doesn't always give you a good reading of what's happening. Like if I would have had a, a larger meal, which I could potentially have a larger meal. Or if I would have been having two meals, which also did happen to me often at the very beginning, I was having two meals. So I was splitting that protein into two. And then I was having more carb, but if I was doing it by percentages, the possibility that I go over, if I have a 2,500 calorie meal, I'm going to go over, right? Because at, I, by the time I go to get to 20, it would be too much. I do know that once you get to 2,500, once you get to three, like, as you go up in calorie intake, that room for 5% really does uh, change a lot. And so you end up being over your 20. Why we, why we want you to be careful about this is because, as I said, those first three ways, those first three meals back when I was eating normally allowed me to gain weight steadily. <laughs> and I, I've said this before, but it, like the standard diets are weight gain diets, and we don't even realize that that's what they are. And interestingly, and I, they're not just weight gain, they're health bashing diets. That's the problem. And because they, they hurt your health, most people don't realize that that means that it's going to be harder for you to lose weight when you finally realize that your weight has risen, or it's going to be harder for you to get back to healthy when you finally realize that your health is, has been damaged because it does it so slowly, slowly over time. And because it pulls you in with this addictive property that it also has, right? So carb counting is actually the healthiest way to make sure that what you're eating is focused on what you need. So here's what I mean by that. When I count carbs, what I'm really saying is my body that makes all the carbs that it needs does not need more than an extra 20 grams. Well, it doesn't need any, but it doesn't need, like it really doesn't need more than 20 grams. If I go past that number, I'm now truly introducing a problem. And I would like to look at it like I have a cup and my cup is full of water, but I have an, like some water over here in a, in a container that I want to put in the cup. And the thing is like, well, do I need to? If the cup's already full, Right. And if I can, if there's a little bit, I can make it, you know, instead of it being flat, I can make it bubble up a little bit. Well, that's the 20 grams. Right. And once I've poured that, if I put 21, it starts to run down the side. And now I'm making a mess. And how is this productive? And it really isn't productive. And I want us to think about this in any possible way that we can think to think about it to help ourselves to realize 
pushing for more than 20 grams of carbs in a day? Why? And the only reason I even eat some grams of carbs in a day occasionally is because it tastes good, but not because I need it. And this is part of the reason that more and more I find myself having carnivore day or carnivore style days. I can't call them carnivore days because I do put, I do put uh, spices and other things in it that brings the carb count up. So the carbs are there. I need to acknowledge them. And I do acknowledge them. And how do I acknowledge them? I track them. And wellness warriors, I need you to understand that it's not until you really let yourself understand that piece of the puzzle that you're going to really know that you're doing what's healthy for you. And I just want to do this one little thing before, before I look at your comments. If I were to look at the day where I did the keto, uh, sorry, the carnivore style meal, because I feel like that's the one that's the most interesting to me when I tracked it. If I wouldn't have allowed myself to track it, what I wouldn't have realized is that there are 6.1 grams. So 6.1 grams, all of those 6.1 grams, well, not all of them. Seriously, there's a little bit of gram of carb in egg. So probably like 5.1 grams came from the spice I put in the meat. And if I wouldn't have let myself see that, I would have thought that I was having a purely carnivore day. But because I track, I was able to realize that no, it wasn't a purely carnivore day. I had actually had some carbs. And these are the things that we don't allow ourselves to see is that if I'm not checking on what I'm doing, I'm not going to know. I'm not really going to know that, yep, there was more in there than you thought was in there. So this is mainly for me. I want you guys to really understand that tracking is really, really important. And if I'm not letting myself track, then I'm all I'm doing is setting myself up to not succeed the way that I want to succeed. So I'm encouraging everybody, let's try to succeed the way that we want to succeed. Because of course, it makes life much easier. But it's also because it's going to help you to, to um, modify things. Because as I'm doing what I'm doing, I can up level if that's what I'm trying to do, or I can correct if I'm making a mistake. Because if I would have had some kind of pain or something and not realized that, oh, there was actually carb in my food, then I might not even have thought to think, well, maybe next time I won't put the carbs, right? It wouldn't even be a question mark because I wouldn't be allowing myself to think about it because why do I need to think about it, right? That's not a thing. Well, guess what? It actually is. Um, Grateful Keto actually said that rather than using an app, they set up their own vegetable chart that tells them how many weight grams they needed for like one to one, two, three, four, like how many grams of, for how many grams of carbs, right? And so it was an interesting way of, instead of using an app, you just open your closet or your cupboard door in your kitchen and you can look and see like, oh, these are the vegetables I typically eat. This is how much I typically have. And then I know right away what's in there and it just makes life easier for those of us who are not super loving the whole, you know, being, being in my phone all the time or be going on to, you know, Google to look for things. Carb counting can be really, um, can bring us out of what we're doing if we're not doing it in the way that's the most efficient for us. So Maria's Dollhouse, like if, if you can find a way that makes it efficient for you, like, like Grateful Keto did, where it's like, it's, it's, it's written there. Or if you're using an app, just making the app, the front page of your phone, for example, um, that's another thing that I did for myself is I put it at the front page, of, page of, front page of my phone so that when I opened my phone, I always saw it. And then if I hadn't tracked something, I could track it right away. Now it's easier for me to track because it's once a day. It doesn't take as much for me to get it to, to actually do it, to track. Well, I'm sorry. I'm always so glad that you guys come and have this chat with me. It really does help me to kind of flesh out my own ideas. And obviously, the more we talk about being healthy, about healthy keto, healthy carnivore, healthy low carb, the more that we talk about these ideas, 
then we not only solidify it for ourselves, but we help more people understand it. And I think that's ultimately the goal that I'm aiming at is to help more people understand it so that we can do what's going to help us to build the body that's going to take us well into our hundreds, right? So I love making these videos for you guys. And I really can't wait to talk to you next week. Don't forget that Thursday is when my videos come out, my recorded videos. And I will see you for the next live on Monday. So thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day.